Hi guys, it's Justin Monis Fiction and welcome back to my channel. So I recently stumbled upon a video of someone doing the burn, rewrite, and reread book tag. So you have to pick a book that you want to burn, a book that you would want to rewrite, and a book that you would love to reread. And I figured I would put my own spin on it. So today I'm going to be doing the tag, but only using fantasy romance books. So stick around. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so let me explain how this is gonna work. I had my husband write down 20 fantasy romance books in this jar. Let's see if my camera will focus on it. And it says, from now until the darkness claims us, and it is from Throne of Glass. I'm obsessed with this tumbler. I just got it from Fairy Loot, and I figured this was the perfect time to show it off, honestly. But anyway, all of the books are written in here, so I am going to shake this up and without looking, pick three books. I will give a very brief synopsis of every book, just so you guys, if you haven't read them, you'll know what they're about. And then I'm gonna pick to burn, rewrite, or reread them. It is gonna be so tough, but I'm very excited to be doing this. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, you can like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. And you can check out my Instagram. It is linked in the description below. I try to post at least twice a week. I said I was gonna post daily. That hasn't been happening. I'm working on it. It's taking me a while to get into the whole social media thing. But anyway, with that being said, let's get into this tag. All right guys, let's get to it. So I have the tumbler here. I'm gonna give it a shake. And I am going to pick three books. I'm really nervous, because I know a lot of these books I really like. Like I let my husband just look at the bottom shelf and it's all fantasy romance. So we'll see, they're kind of stuck together. Okay, I got three. So let's check them out. The first one is The Bridge Kingdom. Oh goodness. The second one is Rhapsodic. And the third one is Throne of Glass. Okay, so this actually might be kind of easy. I'm gonna get the books, I'll be right back. All right, so we kind of started off easy. I actually know where I'm gonna put these. So the first one is The Bridge Kingdom, and this follows a girl who has been trained since she was young to be an assassin to one day marry this king and take over the bridge. And the bridge pretty much controls like the economy. So if you own the bridge, you're pretty much in good shape. So she is going to marry the king and then kill him and take over this bridge. I have a full review of this. I will leave linked in the cards and in the description, but overall this was very enjoyable. There is a second one that is also really good that I keep meaning to do a review on and I keep putting it off. So that is The Bridge Kingdom and this is by Danielle L. Jensen. The second book I also have talked about on my channel before and that is Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. This has a lot of similarities to A Court of Thorns and Roses, and this follows a main character who is a siren who ends up making a deal with the bargainer when she is younger. And every time she makes a deal, she gets one of these beads that she has to eventually repay back a favor. And it is uh, dual timelines. So this is all happening when she is younger and then it jumps into the future. And now she has to pay her debts back to the bargainer and they kind of have this romance. There's also a mystery element to this book I have a lot of feelings about this. I actually liked this book a lot as a whole. I thought that the main problem I had was a side character that was written terribly and a little bit too much smut to the point where I feel like the plot didn't need as much it was put in there. I am fine with smutty books. I just don't want them to be a detriment to the plot. And I felt that's what it was in this book. And the last one is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Bass. I feel like if you watch my channel, you probably already know what this book is. I talk about it all the time. I love Sarah J. Mass, but this follows a Selena Sardothian who is this, oh my gosh, I can't even remember like what is like not a spoiler and what's a spoiler. Selena Sardothian, she's like an assassin and she has to compete in these trials for a king. And that's all I'm gonna say because I honestly forget what happens in every book, but definitely this was, I think Sarah J. Mass's first series and it's so good. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I like it a little less than Akatar. Akatar is my fave, but this was really high up there. I love the characters in this. They are awesome. So, which one am I going to burn? Okay, this might actually be more tough than I thought because I know which one. Ooh, oh guys, I don't know 
Ooh, darn. <laughs> okay, so I'm. This is going to be controversial. I'm going to burn Throne of Glass, which sounds crazy because I love this series. Selena Sardothian as a character drives me bananas. Um, I think she is so. Um, what in the, she starts off very egotistical and just annoying and like self-confident, but like way too much self-confidence. It's just, I just, very grating reading her as a character. I think as the story progresses, she matures and everything overall becomes, um, the character just becomes better. Um, I love Aelin, I love uh, Rowan and like those characters later in the series, but Throne of Glass, the first one, I felt like it was really, I almost DNF the series because of this book. This book and the second book, I didn't like, but then going forward, I loved. So I'm gonna burn Throne of Glass just because I, it's probably my least favorite out of the three. It's not my least favorite out of the three. I'll explain now as I go. So I'm burning this. Rewrite, this is easy. Rhapsodic, because I feel like this book has so much potential. I loved the murder element and the mystery element that's towards the end of the book. I loved the relationship between the bargainer and the main character. I thought the whole like debt thing was like really cool, really original, really well done. I just hated the writing of this book. Um, and I've read more by Laura Thalassa. I think me and her writing, it just doesn't jive well, but I like the idea of this. So I would love, personally, I can't write but I would love for someone to rewrite this book because I think it has so much potential and could be so good. It just, it fell flat for me. And reread The Bridge Kingdom. Um, I really do. I think this is a really good book. Uh, I think that more people should read it. I don't remember if this is indie published or not, but I don't see it a lot. And it really is a very good book. I love the main character. I love the slow burn relationship and the whole like enemies to lovers, like, and the miscommunication is there, but it's not ridiculous. So overall, I really enjoyed this book. I will 100% reread this. All right, let's give this another shake. And let's see. One, two, three. All right, so let's see what these are. First one is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Just read that book. Crescent City by Sarah J. Vass. Oh, it's gonna be a tough one, guys. <laughs> and The Prison Healer by Lynette Nani. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be rough. Oh no, oh no. Let me get the books, I'll be right back. All right, I got the books, but I don't have Neon Gods. It is downstairs and I don't feel like traveling that far. So I will just put the cover on the screen. But the first one let's talk about is Neon Gods by Katie Roberts, that is, or Katie Robert, that is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I believe it just came out. It is the first book I've read by this author and I thought it was so good. It follows Persephone who in this version, it's almost like different cliques. So there is the upper city and the lower city and the upper city is ruled by Zeus and the 13, which is like uh, Hermes, Aphrodite, Apollo, all the main gods. And then you have the lower city that's ruled by Hades, but people really don't know if he is, it's, he's more like a myth. It's more like, just don't go to the lower city. You have across the river Styx, just don't ch like go there. You hang out in the upper city and it's all these different like social like gods. So Persephone is engaged against her will to Zeus and Zeus is notorious for killing all of his wives. So she's not happy about this. She runs away, goes past the river Styx and ends up in Hades territory meets up with Hades, who she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't think you existed. And they form this relationship. They make an agreement that she will stay with Hades for three months until her 25th birthday when her trust fund kicks in. And then she'll leave to the human lands. And Hades hates Zeus, so he's all about this plan. And it goes from there. I really enjoyed this. Um, it did have a BDSM element, which isn't something I typically read. I mean, I read like Fifty Shades of Grey when I was younger and that's about all I have in terms of reading that genre. However, I think it was done very well in this. Um, this is definitely a smut filled book, but I really enjoyed it. The next book is The Prison Healer by Lynette Nani. This is, it, I don't have the dust jacket on because I just took it off for another video. But this follows Kiva, who is a 
prison healer in Zalendov Prison. She's been there for the last 10 years and she's really biding her time because her family is constantly sending her notes saying, be patient, we're coming to get you. And she's just biding her time, waiting for her family to save her when the rebel queen is sentenced to be in prison in Zalendov. And attached to the rebel queen is a note from her family saying, keep the rebel queen alive, we're coming to get you. So Kiva has to figure out a way to keep this rebel queen alive, which is very difficult because the rebel queen has just been sentenced to do these elemental trials. And no one has ever survived these trials. So Kiva decides to take the rebel queen's place. It goes from there. It is an awesome book. I believe this is a debut novel. It was phenomenal. I love the characters. I love the story. Very well done. And the last book um, on this list, or of the three, is Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. So I need to do a reread of this because I read this when it first came out. I love this book. I think it is great. I do think it has a couple issues with info dumps in the very beginning. It is very tedious to get through, but it follows Bryce Quinlan who, oh my gosh, I can't even remember everything that happens in this book. Bryce Quinlan who ends up partnering, partnering with a fallen angel named Hunt in order to solve this mystery is I guess the most generic way you can describe it, but it's so good. I cannot wait for the next one in this. I think I'm gonna do a reading vlog where I reread this because I love this book. Um, the ending of this book was just, I remember screaming when I got to the end, just so much happens and it is, it's so, so good. So those are the three. Uh, this one is gonna be a lot more difficult to pick from than the other one. So. Okay, let's figure out which one I'm gonna burn. I don't know, guys. <laughs> this is so hard. I think I'm going to burn. This hurts. The Prison Healer by Lynette Nani only, only because I don't feel as invested to these characters as I did with Crescent City and I already have other plans for Neon Gods. So. It was really between this and Crescent City, and I just don't, I think as the series progresses, I will fall in love with these characters a little bit more. I think the author did an amazing job of making these characters likable, and it's the first in a series. I just feel like Crescent City was a better first in a series than The Prison Healer, so I'm gonna burn The Prison Healer. I know, it hurts a little bit. Then, which one will I rewrite? And that is Neon Gods. So, like I said, I think there was a little bit more smut in there than I was expecting. I don't think it needed quite that, but I loved the overall story. I loved the little uh, nods to the original Hades and Persephone storyline. Like at one point they adopt three black dogs, kind of like a nod to Severus. And like, I don't know, I just, I really enjoyed that book a lot more than I thought I was going to. However, I do think it could use a little bit of a rewrite maybe omit a little bit of the BDSM smut, add a little bit more to like the whole story dynamic with like Persephone and her sisters and all that. I feel like we could have uh, fleshed out those characters a little bit more, but overall, very enjoyable book. What book will I reread? Crescent City by Sarah J Mass, because this book was a wonderful time and I feel like I need to reread it again just so I remember everything for when the next book comes out, hopefully, Hopefully soon. I don't think it's coming out till next year, but we will see. All right, moving on to the next one. Let's see what we get. One, two, three. All right. First up, we have Shadow and Bone, which I don't actually think I put on that shelf. My husband must just have wrote it down from the TV series. A Court of Thorns and Roses and Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Okay, let me go get those. All right, I have the books. The first one is A Court of Thorns and Roses and this is by Sarah J Mass. It is the first book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, or this particular one is, and it follows Farah, who is a human girl living on the border. She lives in the human lands on the border of the Fae territory. And one day she mistakenly kills another fairy thinking it's a wolf and the High Lord of the Spring Court ends up whisking her away, and the story goes from there. I love this series. If you like fantasy romance, I could not recommend this one more. The next book 
is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, and this follows Karu, who is essentially raised by demons. And one day, these mysterious handprints start showing up all over town. This is kind of like a Russian setting. Uh, it's very, the setting in this book is very cool. But it turns out it is being left by an angel, and they form this relationship. It's almost like a Romeo and Juliet retelling, and also very, very, very good. And last up is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This was recently adapted into a Netflix special or Netflix show, and the Netflix show is absolutely amazing. It um, encompasses both Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows, and it's just done beautifully, and it's so good. But this follows Alina Starkov, who is the Sun Summoner. So in Alina's world, Ravka, her country, there's something called the Shadow Fold, and it is this dark area that's just full of horrible monsters and because Alina is the sun summoner she should be able to get rid of the shadow fold or that's what everyone thinks. Unfortunately she was not trained to be a Grisha so she goes to, with the Darkling who is a super powerful guy who's able to create darkness and other Grisha to train. And Mal, her friend from the orphanage is also like running around doing stuff. Um, I didn't love this series. It was okay. I just feel like Six of Crows was so much better. And this kind of just like fell flat for me. But definitely check out the show. I love the show. I'm sorry if you're a fan of the original series. It just, it wasn't great. But anyway, this will be easy. So which one am I going to burn? Definitely Shadow and Bone. Leave or do go. I just feel like I didn't love the original trilogy. I thought that the relationships were just interesting. I hated Mal as a character. I liked the Darkling to an extent, just overall, and Alina also, I just was not a fan of. So overall, definitely probably burn Shadow and, Shadow and Bone. And then rewrite Daughter of Smoke and Bone, although I do really like Lainey Taylor's writing style. I feel like we could make this a little bit more, I don't know, modern. It's older YA. It doesn't really feel that way, but there are some elements of it that definitely can remind you that it's older YA. So I feel like if she wrote this now, more recently, it would end up being an overall better book, maybe a little bit more mature. So I would want this to be rewritten still by Lainey Taylor, just Lainey Taylor of today instead of Lainey Taylor, like what, 15 years ago. And last one, which one will you reread? A Court of Thorns and Roses. I will reread this book over and over. It's not even my favorite of the series. It's just, I love these characters so, so much. I think I've already reread this first book like three or four times and I, I'm sure I'm gonna read it again within the next year. So definitely reread A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. All right guys, and we are down to our last six. So let's see, I'm nervous. One, that was a big sheet of paper, two and three. All right, let's see. So we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Love that series. And Blood and Honey by Shelby Maherin. And A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. So I'm going to go grab those and I'll be right back. All right, unfortunately, I don't have my copy or my physical copy of Blood and Honey, but it is the second book in the Serpent and Dove series by Shelby Mahern, and it follows Lude, Lou and Reed. So Lou is a witch who is fleeing from her coven, and Reed is a witch hunter. And through some comical circumstances, they end up being married, and they pretty much just have to deal with each other. So he is this very stoic, by the book Witch Hunter and she is just this very flamboyant and like crazy witch who just loves to be very like obnoxious and Reed just can't stand that. So they end up having this relationship and they end up seeing the good in each other and the story progresses from there. I loved Serpent and Dove and that's actually also in um, this Tumblr somewhere. However, Blood and Honey, the second book, the one we're talking about currently, I despised. Um, I don't like the direction that the characters went. I just feel like it didn't, I don't know, the characters didn't end up doing what I assumed they were going to do based on their personalities in Serpent and Dove. I also, the ending of Blood and Honey was just, it felt like it came out of nowhere. I just, I had a lot of issues with Blood and Honey. I will be continuing the series. I do plan on reading Gods and Monsters just because I want to see what happens with Lou and Reed and I kind of hope they get back to where they were in Serpent and Dove, but we will see. 
So that is Blood and Honey. The second book is A Court of Silver Flames. So I decided to have my husband add that to the jar just because I feel like even though it is in the same world as A Court of Thorns and Roses, it is told in a different perspective, which makes it feel a lot or feel different than A Court of Thorns and Roses. So this is told in Nesta's perspective. It takes place after the events that happen in A Court of Thorns and Roses. And it's really just Nesta trying to heal and also her developing a relationship with another character. I don't want to say who the character is because I feel like that's spoilers for the Akatar series. But overall, I did really enjoy this book. Um, this particular one, this dust jacket, is from the bookish box and it features Nesta, Nesta on the cover. Oh, if my thing wants to focus. There we go. And the unnamed love interest on the back, which I just love. I love these covers. So that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. And last up is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is one of my favorite books of all time. You can even tell by the spine. I don't know if my, there we go. I can't really tell, but this spine is so broken and so cracked just because I've read this book so many times. I love it. It follows Poppy, who is the maiden. She is kept in isolation for this ritual called the Ascension, and she is kept in isolation by the Ascended, who are these mon or not monsters. They are these godlike people that have black eyes, immortality. They don't get sick, but they can't go out during the day, and she just lives this really lonely life until she meets Hawk, the newest member of the Rise Guard and soon to be her personal guard, and he kind of gets her out of her shell and it goes from there, and it's great. And I love this book so much. It just won, I think, the best romance award on Goodreads. It won something. It definitely skirts the line of fantasy and romance. However, as the series progresses, it definitely has more fantastical and fantasy elements, and it's just so good. So definitely check this out if you like fantasy romance. I can't recommend this one anymore. It's just, it's, it's so, so good. But anyway, from the three, which one am I going to burn, which one am I going to reread, and which one am I going to rewrite? This one's actually really easy. So we are burning Blood and Honey by Shelby Maherin. We don't need that book in our lives. <laughs> um, I just, I did not enjoy that. And I am going to rewrite A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. So I have my reasons for this. I can't go too much into it because it does contain spoilers. If anyone wants to talk about it, DM me on Instagram or leave a spoiler uh, warning in the comments and I'll talk to you about it in the comments. There is a few holes in this that I feel like it involves wings. It involves, one thing involves wings, one thing involves an infant. But I feel like there are like plot holes that Sarah J. Mass just kind of either forgot what she wrote in the original or she didn't care and I just don't like the way it was done. I feel like we could have had a better... Um, uh, not problem. There could have been a better conflict and resolution than what was done here. I love Nesta. I love her story. I love the found family, the sisterhood, all of that stuff I think was handled so beautifully, especially her healing and everything was great. I love the romance. I even love like the smut in this. A lot of people were, had a problem with the amount of smut. I think it was fine, maybe a little too much, but like nothing ridiculous. However, there were some elements that I really do wish would be rewritten. So yeah, this one, Court of Silver Flames, definitely I pick for rewrite and reread from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I just finished a reread of this. I will leave that vlog linked in the description and in the cards. I will reread this book probably once a year until the series is complete. I just love this series so much. I love this world. I love everything about it. So definitely this will be reread. All right, we are down to the last three. I think there's actually five left in here. Um, but we will see what three I pick. Kind of nervous once again. One, two, three. All right, let's see. We have Serpent and Dove, which I already talked about a little bit. Kingdom of the Wicked, and this is by Carrie Maniscalco. And Radiance by Grace Draven. Okay. Let me get those, I'll be right back. All right, I'm actually really nervous about this one. So I like all of these books. The first one is Radiance by Grace Straven. This follows Ildico and Frishin, I believe, and they are in an arranged marriage. So Ildico is just a regular human. Frishin is from this like monster race. They have like darker skin, these like claws for nails. I think they have like all black eyes. 
and they pretty much just find each other absolutely repulsive. So I thought this was going to be a hate to love romance where it's like a beauty and the beast type thing where they slowly like form this connection. They actually get along right off the bat. Uh, they both really like each other's personalities. They just aren't like sexually attracted to each other, if that makes sense. And then they slowly, as they learn, she learns more about his culture. It goes from there and they kind of develop this relationship and it's a very cute, um, like romance, fantasy romance. I shouldn't say cute, it's not cute, but it's a very good fantasy romance. I ended up loving both of these characters. I think it was done very well. This is my favorite Grace Draven book I've read so far. I have realized that I'm actually probably not a huge fan of that author. I like this book. I did not like the other two I read from her. One was Phoenix Unbound. I forget the name of the other one I read, but this one was definitely awesome. Next up is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern. I already talked about this. This is the first one in the Serpent and Dove series following Rude and, I keep, keep putting their names together, following Lou and Reed. And this is where you're introduced to the characters and the relationship forms. This book, I absolutely adored. I really enjoyed it. I loved seeing Reed lighten up and Lou kind of like get him out of his shell. And it was just, it was a really good time. I did really enjoy this one. Up, we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This follows Amelia, who is a witch, and she tries to solve a murder and just seek vengeance. But in doing so, she ends up getting wrapped up with one of the seven princes of hell wrath. So the seven princes of hell are actually the seven deadly sins, which I thought was a really cool element. This was the first book I ever read by Carrie Maniscalco. I have since read the first two books in the stalking Jack the Ripper, hunting Jack the Ripper? One of those uh, series, which has also been very enjoyable. And this book was a really good time. And I think the next one is coming out pretty soon. I'm not exactly sure when. I'm really looking forward to it because I did really enjoy this book. So overall, which one am I going to burn? Which one am I going to rewrite? And which one am I going to reread? <sighs> okay, so burning's hard. Um, I Like I said, I did enjoy all of these books. I think I'm going to have to go, and this hurts a little bit, with uh, Radiance by Grace Draven. I feel like it is a little bit slower to start off. I am not a huge fan of this uh, writer's writing style. Overall, I just didn't love this one, <laughs> love this one or feel as connected to this one as I did with the other two. So if I had to burn one, I would probably burn this. Overall, I did still very much enjoy this. I do recommend this if you want fantasy romance just for me. Out of the three, it was probably my least favorite. Moving on to rewrite, I'm going to say Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I feel like the main love interest, or I don't know if he's a love interest yet, don't quote me on that, but the main prince, Wrath, needed to be a little bit more developed. He just felt kind of one note, which was a shame, and I feel like the writing kind of, so I talked about this, I ended up doing a review of this book, but I don't think I ever actually published it. So if you guys want a full review of this, let me know in the comments and I will put that up. I filmed it and edited it, I just never actually released it. But there were issues with transitions in this book. I felt like we'd be reading and suddenly something was happening and without resolving what was happening on the page, we would just turn the page and be in another place. And I'd be like, wait, weren't we just like over here with this guy, like about to have bad things happen? Like how did we just get from one place to another? And I actually noticed that a little bit with uh, Carrie Maniscalco's other series. So transitions, I feel like, just could have been handled a little bit better. So I feel like this could be rewritten just to have a little bit better of a flow or more flow. And overall, that's it. And I'm being nitpicky. Like overall, I did very much enjoy this book. Also, while I'm being nitpicky, uh, the world building, I think could have been established a little bit more. I'm not really sure what timeline this is supposed to be taking place in. Uh, the descriptions of like food and everything was done very well, but overall I just feel like we didn't get a great grasp on the world and I wish it was elaborated on just a little bit more. And finally, Serpent and Dove, I would like to reread. I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, this book was awesome. Blood and Honey, not so much, but overall I love this book. I love learning about Reed and Lou. They're just a really cute couple. Also, personal note, uh, this is a, Reed I think is supposed to be like six foot five or something and Lou is supposed to be really short. I am married to someone who is six four. I am only five two, so I like books that kind of have like the tall small relationship. I feel like I don't see it very often. 
All right, guys, that is it for my video. Thank you so much for watching. I tag anyone who wants to do this tag. It was really fun. I think I'm gonna do it again with a different genre. So look forward to that in the future. Please let me know in the comments what you guys would burn, rewrite, or reread. I wanna know if you guys had any different opinions than me. And I said this once already, but I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.